Hey, it's the Terminian Hero here, and we're playing some more Jack 2, and we're about to go talk to crew. You boys are turning out to be quite useful, eh? Mm, I have another task for you. The sewers used to be a fabulous smuggling route for me before the Baron installed security devices. And before those late night snack runs kept you from fitting out the front door. I bet you've hatched another brilliant plan in that hungry little brain of yours. So, who or what do we have to shake down, knock out, or blow up? Well, I need someone to go down and shoot every sentry gun in the sewers. And I'll give you a sweet weapon upgrade if you succeed. Let me guess. Dank murky water? Reeks worse than your breath at an oyster fest? Fuller of metalheads than your plate at a one-pass buffet? And of course, weapons more lethal than your ever so tidy whiteies on a hot summer day. Look, Donut Hole, why don't we float around here looking hot and heavy, and you go roto root the pipes? We're not doing anything until you tell us why metalheads are trading with the Baron's forces. Oh, I should have had you both kneecapped, eh? All I know is that the Baron cut a desperate deal with the metalhead leader. <sighs> Metalheads need eco, so the Baron supplies them with regular shipments. In return, the Metalheads agree to attack the city just enough to satisfy the Baron's continued rule. Yeah, but how long can that deal last? Well, the Baron is running short on eco, eh? And the Metalheads are short on patience. Baron Praxis needs this wall to keep in power. Otherwise, the city would put the true ruler on the throne, wherever that little brat is. Daxter and I will clear your sewers. And we haven't forgotten about that weapons upgrade you promised in return. Bloodsuckers. Nothing to report. All right, so... Yeah, one thing that's interesting about the lore of this game is that there's, like, two bad factions. We've got the Baron as one villain, and we've got the Metalhead Leader as another villain. But that's not gonna concern us too much right now, because right now, we've just gotta go to the sewers, take out some guns. So let's head on over there real quick. We haven't been there yet. Now I did mention before that the sewers have exactly one precursor orb and that it's permanently missable. Cause while this game was designed to be, uh, designed so that no precursor orbs were permanently missable, it was not programmed that way. And that's something I will explain later as far as the sewers go. This is unit alpha. For now, we don't need to worry about that one precursor orb, because that orb must be collected on the second sewer mission. Right. We can see it on the first mission, but we can't get to it, and I'll show you where it is. So here we are. Might as well use our scatter gun here. I don't need that dark eco because I'm full on it. We can turn the light on here. Let's look at our map, actually. So there's our map of the sewers. I want you to remember this map well. Because that has something to do with what I said about, you know, the difference between this way this game was designed and the way it was programmed. But anyways, if we look up there, there's a way up there. We've got some water down here. Which we probably don't want to go into because, you know, it's a sewer. But here's one of those guns we need to take out. Jack. That's one town. Keep looking. 
So there we go. That's a turret done. Got the nice cinematic camera for when that guy goes to attack you. Which is pretty nice. But anyways, if we look into the water, not only are there these guys swimming around, but you can see the precursor orb down in the water. Which is way too low for us to dive down to, even if we wanted to go into this crappy water with the enemies in it. So yeah, we can't get that precursor orb yet. Turn on the lights, and fight these guys. This area seems to have a theme of turning on lights, but I like how you can tell there's dangerous metal heads in the dark because of their glowing metal head. Got another turret out here, and it looks like there's some mines in the water. Not that we're gonna be going. Good work so far. Not that we're gonna be going down into the water. So let's head on over this way. Or not. That looks like a lot of guys. Let's dark jack this. Yeah, you gotta love that dark bomb. Of course, using that immediately gets rid of your dark jack abilities. But it's still a pretty impressive attack nonetheless. You know what, we never checked how many more Skull Gems the Precursor Oracle needs to give us our next new ability. But I'm pretty confident that it's 200, which is a lot, but either way, it doesn't matter because the Precursor Oracle icon will appear on our radar whenever we have enough. So we really don't need to know how many we need, but I'm pretty confident that it's 200. Anyways, got another turret here that just shot us into the poopy water. I should have timed my jumps better. It always... Nice. Keep it up. Those turrets always shoot low enough where you can jump over their shots. So you've just got to time everything, right? Let's turn the lights on again. And now the lights went out on us. They had to play with the lights a bit like that. Now, would it be possible for me to go turn them on again? Yeah, I can. But they go out every time I go over here. Just gotta time your jumps right. Alright, mission complete. We still have to fight our way out of here, but we're pretty close to the start. This level loops on itself, just like a Ratchet and Clank level. And here we are, back at the start. So yeah, take a look at our map again and, you know, 
We've totally explored the whole sewers and all that, aside from out into the water up in that upper part. So yeah, that's totally the whole sewers. There's not any more to it than that, surely. There's definitely more to it than that. And back out here. So, should we just go to crew or is there a side mission? We're just heading back to crew. I mean, I could have taken the vehicle that was right there, but instead I'm taking that guy's vehicle. Also, if you look carefully at these vehicles, there's steering wheels in both seats. I'm going the wrong way for some reason. What am I doing? But yeah, so no matter which seat you get into, you know, you can drive. But it's also worth noting that different vehicles do have a different amount of seats. Like most vehicles have two seats. The little fast zoomers have one along with the, you know, the, like the police bikes that the guards use. And then like the bigger vehicles uh, those actually have three seats. Yeah, these vehicles here. Nope, let me in there. Get over here. Yeah, if you look carefully at these vehicles, they have three seats. Although only one wheel that's just in the middle. It's in the middle seat, but... Yeah, the amount of seats on a vehicle is kind of noteworthy for, you know, if we're go ever going to have someone with us other than Daxter who just sits on our shoulder. And it's also worth noting where the seats are. Like, in this vehicle, there's seats on both sides of us. But, like, in some vehicles, you know... If a guy's gonna get in your vehicle, it has to be on the correct side. But we'll get into all that stuff more later. When, once we actually get to start driving people around. What is that horrible smell? <laughs> oh, great! We do your dirty work in the sewers and come back smelling worse than a wet hip hog in a warm barn! <laughs> This could have a serious impact on the lady factor. No. I think it was my lunch, actually. Nice work in the sewers, eh? I guess you're looking for that weapon upgrade. Mm. Well, there's a blaster mod stashed in some crates at the port. Find it, and it's yours. <laughs> All right, let's go get that weapon upgrade. With the help of this guy's vehicle. So, uh, yeah, we just need to go get that weapon, which is right over here. It's easy to find when we've got a radar. It's also, you know, at the gun training course. Would you like to test your skills on the gun course? 
So yeah, now we've got a yellow eco weapon. Which, if you remember in the first Jack and Daxter game, Yellow Eco gave you the ability to shoot fireballs. And that's basically what this gun is. It's a normal gun that shoots just yellow fireballs. So yeah, let's do the blaster training here. Yeah, you just need to destroy the enemies for them to count as points. You don't actually need to hit them with the gun. So yeah, we need 4,000 to reach our goal. And again, I don't really want to get gold right now, because that's going to be its own video. But we're pretty close to our goal already. These courses are slightly randomized, where there's like specific locations where the gold targets can appear. But it's random which ones they'll appear at. I think the same amount of gold targets appear every time. Here, it's kind of like a rhythm game. But yeah, I think the same amount of gold targets appear every time, it's just which ones show up is random. Oh, I missed a lot there. Well, I'm not getting gold then, which, you know, like I said, I don't want to anyways. Not at this point. Can we at least get bronze this time? We seem a little behind even for that. These gun courses are definitely not easy. You didn't automatically target the thing like Sig said you would. You can be my backup any day. So yeah, just like with Scattergun, we just barely missed out on the bronze. Let's look at our high scores to see what we needed there. We needed 9,000 for the bronze, 11,000 for silver, and 13,000 for gold. Care to try the record? So anyways, let's get out of here. Now we could go to Crew or Torn, or is there a side mission? There is. Between Crew and Torn, Crew's the closest, and we've been doing stuff for him, so... It makes sense to go for Crew, but... Let's see where we end up after doing the side mission. Maybe it'll make more sense to go to Torn at that point. Here's another chance to prove your knowledge of the city. Without my strength, there would be no city. I've got suspicious activity. That one's easy. I've shown you that place already. You saw it was right by where the yellow barrier is. So that's one that would actually be harder if you do it later, because then the yellow barrier wouldn't be there anymore. The city needs your Entrance work. denied. You do not have proper clearance. It is better inside the no cover zone. Stupid! This thing made it so I couldn't hear what what Torn said. But he repeats himself a lot, I think, so it's fine. 
it wasn't a story mission anyways, so it's, you know, it's not that big a deal. Anyways, Crew's right here, so let's do his mission. I have a proposition for you, Jack. Racing is the biggest sport in the city. Errol is the undisputed grand champion. He's crazy and dangerous on the track. <laughs> My kind of guy. Only a fool would dare race against him, eh? And that's where you two come in. A client of mine is looking for a fast driver for her racing team. Here's a security pass to get you into the stadium section. Uh, and your contract with just a few trifles for me. <laughs> I've uh, already signed your name to save time. Hmm? We the racers hereby agree to give crew all proceeds from race earnings, endorsement fees, broadcast royalties, syndication residuals, vehicle sponsorships, mall appearance fees, collectible card assets, fast food tie-ins, use of likeness rights, talk show deals, clothing lines, all print rights including book, novella, comic, pamphlet, ticket tape, neon sign, and bathroom graffiti designs. <sighs> Toy rights, shoe lines, mood rings, game rights. Game rights? Vitamin endorsement, city kickback, movie deals, and of course, all death and dismemberment accident insurance claims. <laughs> we can work out the tiny details later. If you can get from here to the race garage near the stadium in less than three minutes, my client said she would consider letting you drive for her team. Make me proud, hmm? Nothing so far. All right, so we've got our security pass, and we've got to go fast. Three minutes to get to the complete opposite side of the city, to a place we haven't even been to before. So let's try our best, if I remember right. The timing on this is a little tight, actually. So I'm definitely going to want to pay attention to where I'm going. Yeah, like, let's go this way. Let's not mess that up. got this turn to get around, which is always awkward to do fast. Dodged some, some guards there. There was one on foot and one in the air. I would like to not get the guards' attention if I can avoid it. Our vehicle is still in one piece after that crash, thankfully. This vehicle is so weak that it can just be instantly destroyed in a single, like, collision. Like, if you go head-on with another vehicle, thankfully that guard didn't notice me bumping him from behind. This is Unit Alpha. We're on route. The Baron's propaganda was talking directly to us. Talking about the dark eco inside us. But yeah, there we just went through the green barrier that we just got the security pass for, so... We're in a whole new section of the city. I forget what this section is called, but it's like the main part of the city. And here's the stadium. We made it with a pretty good amount of time left. Uh, hello? Crew said someone was looking for a race driver? I'm busy right now. You must be Crew's new errand boy. Look, I don't mean to be rude. You did get here fast. But I'm not interested in any new drivers right now. And I've got work to do. Is there anything we can do? No! I'm, uh, working on a secret, uh, uh, vehicle project. Okay, sorry. Listen, if you think you've got the guts to race in this town, try taking my prototype jet board out on the stadium court. Beat the stadium challenge, and maybe I'll consider you for my team.
So apparently being good at a jet board means you'll be good at racing a vehicle, which is kind of weird. But anyways, I want to check real quick what the name of the new section of this town is. And on that note, I want to bring up something interesting. So in the first Jack and Daxter game, if you went into your uncle's house... You could look at his walls, and there were some pieces of a map of the world of that first game. But if you had the original Jack and Daxter game, like on PS2, with the manual, you could actually see that full map in the manual, and it was really cool. Well, Jack 2 has something similar. If you have the case for Jack 2, uh, it has a reversible cover... But it's secretly a reversible cover. It doesn't tell you that it's a reversible cover. And the inside cover isn't actually a different cover. It's a screenshot of Haven City from not directly above, but like angled from above. And it has all the, like a bunch of noteworthy locations marked. So, the section of the city that we just opened up, yeah, they call it Main Town. I just wanted to look at that quick and see what it was actually called. But anyways, let's go do some jet boarding here. But yeah, it's not like the map we have here where it has like no detail. It's actually like a screenshot of the city, which is pretty cool. Just wanted to look at the poster there. Anyways, here it is. So yeah, we've got a bunch of tricks we can do, and we've got to rack up a bunch of tricks to get some points here. So another mini game. I found that the best way to get a bunch of points is to like, first of all to just spam a lot, but also to like, go from grind rail to grind rail while doing a bunch of tricks. So our goal is 15,000 points, which we'll get easily. But yeah, because being on a grind rail, you can land and then do another trick, but being on the rail doesn't count as landing. So you can keep doing more tricks. So yeah, bronze is 50,000. The things that the those little things you can collect they are worth a hundred. There's also these little pathways you can go across, which I find to be not worth going across, but since I'm not gonna be going across them when I'm going for gold, I might as well go across them now just to show them. Yeah, we're not gonna get bronze, but that's because I'm not really trying anymore. Good job. 
I would like to actually take some of these alternate routes, but apparently I'm not good enough to do that right now. There we go. Oh my gosh, that's actually really difficult. Oh, I, I know what I need to do. I need to get a speed boost. Oh my gosh, but I'm having a hard time getting a chance to do a speed boost. I didn't want to start the challenge again. I accidentally hit the judge. Or at least the point where you activate the judge. Ah, I can't take any of these special routes. I'm so bad, apparently. Try to put a number of moves together to get points. Yeah, look at all this nonsense. <laughs> Also, it's worth noting, uh, uh, is it really worth noting, but I find it interesting, this tunnel here, it really, rem first of all, this is a great place to earn points because of the grind rails, but also this place reminds me of a place from San Francisco Rush 2049. I remember in one of the battle arenas, just going against my friend, and... I thought I was safe on the top, but then he went into the little tunnel below and used this sonic boom thing from below, which exploded and reached to the upper level and just destroyed me. He just drove directly below where I was and just launched his attack. Anyways, we've done some fancy stuff here. We don't need to mess around here anymore. I feel like I've explored this place well enough. Oh, I didn't mean to activate that again. I just wanted to look up there. Because there's the path I wasn't good enough to go across. And I just want to look at it. Yeah, and it would end out here. Okay. Ooh, there's a jump. So many of these paths, I feel like I've just never gone across. Because I've both never needed to and have never been good enough to do so. Anyways, so I would actually like to get out of here now. As I just do mad tricks trying to find the exit. See, look at how quickly I can rack up points. It's kind of crazy if you just spam a lot. Yeah, that's like the real secret, but anyways, let's return our jet board. And if we look at our high scores, the jet board game stadium thing. Yeah, so the jet board game, we needed 50,000 for bronze, 90,000 for silver, and uh, 120,000 for gold. So again, all these records are things that I'm going to be getting you know, off, like, not off screen, uh, in a bonus video. Nothing to report. So let's go back and talk to the mechanic. Now that we have impressed her.
We beat the stadium challenge. Great. People do get lucky. Listen, don't you have someone to collect money from or beat up or something? You don't like us, do you? You work for that slime ball crew. What's not to like? Looks like you've won a few races. Isn't it true the city champion gets to tour the palace? Yeah. Why? Could you get me into the palace? A friendly visit, I doubt it. Yeah. I'm a real fan of the Baron. Okay. I'll help you out if you stop bothering me. I saw an old maintenance elevator at the base of one of the palace support towers. That old lift might take you up to the palace if you can find a way to turn on the elevator's power. Proceeding is planned. All right. So we are working towards our goal of getting to the Baron, and I didn't mean to shoot my weapon there. Thankfully, the guards didn't care. We have a side mission available here in, uh, here in Main Town. And it's not very far away. No. So we'll go do that quick. Let's, let's get a vehicle that's not on fire. not gonna land on you guard you're not gonna stop me from getting this side mission started but my vehicle might get away vehicle so I can talk to this thing we're evaluating the use of homing beacons and missions get all of the beacons as fast as you can you gotta move quickly on this one I hate this all right so we've got to collect some beacons that are scattered around main town and because there was a guard there, they're going to be after us throughout this whole mission. Yeah, you definitely need a vehicle for this just because of where a lot of them are positioned up in the sky. So, you know, pick a good route and do what you can and don't get destroyed by any guards kamikaze in you. Because they will do that. Oh, I'm not really sure where to go now. Let's keep going this way. All right, there's some right here that I almost went straight past. Okay, we've got this. There's only two left and they're right over here. And there we go, that's one of the more unique missions that you can get from those little side mission things. And we've even escaped the guards. Nice. That means I'm not gonna have to get killed before I end the video. So yeah, we're definitely going to be talking to Torn next in that crew, because I mean, you know, we're here. Torn's the closest to us, so we go to him next. So yeah, that's where we're gonna end it. In the next video, we go see Torn. I'm the Terminian Hero, and I will see you then.